Okay, I've got three o'clock. Call to order this meeting of the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District, May 18th, 2021. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call roll. Commissioner Rivers? Here. Commissioner Way? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner West? Here. Commissioner Flowers? Absent. Uh, next order of business is adoption and approval of agenda. Um, under new business, uh, both of those agenda items are Commissioner Flowers agenda items, so I would uh, move that we strike both of those uh, and um, move them to uh, next month's meeting instead. Second. All in favor? Aye. And uh, all in favor of adopting the agenda then, I guess, in that form? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, good. Uh, public comment. <clears throat> Hearing nothing, government representative comments. Good afternoon, Sydney Limblad, St. John's County Parks and Recreation. Um, just one, one small update from us. We are uh, replacing the Volano floating dock. It was damaged um, in the past hurricanes, um, so it's a bit tilted. So um, that will be replaced between the June-July time frame. I mean, really, the only other thing is our um, Volano dredge agenda item will go before our board on June 1st. Um, and so with that approval, then I can bring the interlocal agreement for the, for the match. So thank you again. Could you just update Commissioner West about what we did last? We, I mean, there's not much to say. We we voted to put a little bit more money into the Volano dredge. It was, ended up being more expensive. I, I read thought. that in the okay. minutes. Yeah. Um, yay, arsenic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. There you go. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jim Piggott, City of San Augustine. Uh, two items first, I'll bring up the pylon memo that I gave you all last commission meeting and that I emailed to you all this morning. Again, we could bid it out for you guys and then there's no guarantee that they would get there within 24, 48 hours. Uh, but I'll remind you at the last meeting, um, Commissioner West, you weren't here, when uh, Commissioner Way called Yelton and he went out and did it right away. That's also still an option. So it's up to you all. If you guys want to discuss that and tell me which direction you want to go. Yeah, did everybody have a chance to, to look that material over? I, I didn't have any, I personally didn't have any edits to it. It looked, it looked fine to me. Yeah, I, I think I'll the rating anywhere. makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Yelton probably will uh, <laughs> score very high on this. So <laughs> I, I think the appropriate procedure is to put it out to bid. Um, okay. Yeah, I agree. So. Um, in that case, can we put that on the agenda for next? I think that needs to be a, a noticed item to, to, for us to vote on. Oh, but, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so can we put that on next, next month's agenda? Yeah. And we'll vote on that. Uh, the scope of work? Yeah, yeah, and the, and, the, and the agreement as well. Okay, and like I said in the email, the agreement is 99% the, of the, um, what we use for the inner local for dredging of salt run. Mm -hmm. um, so... Right. Uh, one other one issue, though, that was outstanding was whether we wanted concrete or wood right. pilings. Right. So maybe that's something we can discuss right now. Sure. Is, is this uh, this is new business now? Uh, now you have an inter now you're going to discuss the interlocal agreement. I think we're going to vote on it. This is the discussion of it right now. Right. No, no, next month. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's going to be under a new. Sure. Right. And so the. Wood or concrete? I mean, my, my thought would be uh, wood, concrete. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot more expensive. Right. Um, not as easily available either. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't just stick with wood. Um, does anybody have any thoughts to the contrary on that? And we no. did say pounding instead of jetting too. Mm -hmm. Yes, saw that. And what about a deadline um, for the bid process? So I'm assuming next month we approve of the interlocal agreement because it needs to be publicly noticed, right? So assuming that we all approve of this and you put this out to bid, what would what's your average turnaround time on 
big proposals. Are you talking from when a contract signed or contracts? Well, hopefully it can all be not only approved, voted on and approved, but executed next month. And That's not going to happen next month. Uh, well, we need to get the scope of work uh, approved from you guys. Then we'll go ahead and put that in our normal um, RFQ that we would send out. We'll advertise that for a minimum of 10 days. Then we'll, then we'll have a team to evaluate all the people that bid on this. And then we have to put the contract together and send that for signatures for one or two or three individuals. So you could be talking after next meeting when the scope of work's done, four to six weeks, I'm guessing. Depending if we have any other major projects that we're trying to get out of the way because this wouldn't be considered one of our major projects. Yeah, I'm just concerned as we're heading into hurricane season, uh, the summer with a lot of boat traffic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what's holding up the scope of work then? Is that on us? Disapproval, yeah. So can we put that on the agenda it, to the extent that there are separate items to consider? And Is that we wanna, what you want two separate items on that? Well, I just want to make sure we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's so in terms of notice. So you want one scope of work. You want to have a discussion regarding the scope of work for the... For the discussion and vote, yeah. And discussion and vote. Mm-hmm. Well, I honestly don't even know if we need any additional discussion. I think it's just going to be an up-down vote. Yeah. I think the, the problem is just we need to follow correct procedure and make sure it's noticed. Vote on the scope of work. Is that what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. And approval and, of the interlocal. And the interlocal, exactly. And, and just if I could, just one other consideration, if the commission is interested, is um, going to the concerns over immediacy and being able to react quickly, as was done at the last meeting. Um, I could easily insert a line or two within the interlocal, making it clear that it's um, not exclusive, that if the commission wished to, they could still do what was done last meeting on their own and deal with an immediate issue. And, and that's fine. I mean, because that would be faster, quite frankly. Um, but for your normal routine ongoing needs, I, I can't imagine that the city wouldn't be a, a perfect fit for doing that, would be my only that, thought. That makes sense. Yeah, agreed. And I'll be sure to get that to you okay. to run by Isabella before. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and then the last thing I have, um, if you all remember the, the galleon and the Santa Maria that has been to the city, the Santa Maria is coming back to the city on May 26th, and it'll be departing on June 1st. So it'll be here over the Memorial Day weekend at the city marina. Just for a few days? Just for a few days, yeah. They have some other ports they're going to. They're coming back from uh, someplace out west. Have they air conditioned it yet? <laughs> I have no idea. I do know that one of the bow thrusters is not working, so we're putting, in, putting them on the end of our breakwater dock. I went in there the last time it was here, and it was like, I don't know, July or something, noon. Well, it's May now. It's the end of May, so it should be a little cooler it's for like you. like going into a convention <laughs> oven. <laughs> and uh, the last thing, I guess, we have a new harbor master who you met. Um, he's been on duty now for almost a month, and he's doing a great job. So if there's anything else, anything for the city? All right, thank you. Thank you. Steve Zukowski, Patrol Supervisor, Lieutenant, St. John's Flagler Coastal Crew. Um, start off with uh, boating safety, not a whole lot there, fisheries. I got some personnel changes I need to I'll just um, bring the commission um, up to speed on. Boating safety, uh, we're expecting a busy Memorial Day weekend for a lot of, re for, a lot of for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one with a lot of the COVID restrictions being lifted. Um, and as long as there's gas out there, we think people are just going to uh, unwind. So boating accidents right now are ahead of last year's pace, if that tells you anything. So we expect a busy one and we'll be out there in full force. I know Sheriff's Office will and city will be, uh, county and city will be out there with their boats also. So. We're expecting, um, we're expecting a busy one, and we'll have everybody out there 
um, this Memorial Day weekend, which is a week from this coming weekend. Um, <clears throat> we've been going around and doing some rental livery inspections. The reports I've been getting, I'm still out of, I'm still uh, out of work on uh, medical leave because of my shoulder, but these are the reports that I've been getting from Officer Miller, who's my um, acting supervisor right now, and going down around deliveries to make sure that all the rental places have the proper safety equipment and gear for their personal watercraft and also their smaller vessels, so we uh, don't so we don't run into any tragic mishaps, you know, especially on the holiday weekends. Uh, let's see, derelict vessels. Uh, I just submitted to my new captain a couple for removal for the city for his approval to go to, for the city of St. Augustine uh, to remove. So we're still working on that. Uh, and uh, I think they were both down in the unofficial Crane Park boat ramp area anchorage, which seems like that's going to be where the majority are, or DVs are going to be right now. Any questions about boating safety or anything? Okay. Fisheries. Uh, Guana Dam up there, it's been busy, particularly depending on the tide, the, the new moon or full moon, and the winds. Nothing new about that. Uh, and we've had officers up there, and they're, they're, they're checking people, and they're making some good cases. Redfish bite and or black drum bite has been going on up there. I was, uh, Officer Miller informed me yesterday that the feds, the federal government, um, is going to open up Red Snapper, but that's to be determined or to be announced with the weekend. We don't know it yet, but it looks like we're going to have a Red Snapper weekend again. So let's just hope it doesn't coincide with a holiday weekend like they did a few years back. Uh, and that's all I have on fisheries, not a whole lot. Oh, boating safety. We did have a manatee zone detail down in Flagler County. Um, Officer John Young on the squad. Uh, basically uh, set that one up. I don't know if you want to hear about it, but it, well, I'll just let you know. It was very successful down there. We had, uh, we had cooperation, several agencies, and also U.S. Fish and Wildlife participated. And we had several boating safety stops. Several warnings were, were issued and also a few citations down there. Um, let's see what else. Personnel. We've had a few personnel changes in the last uh, month. Uh, one being that uh, this area for Northeast region, this is known as Area 1 for Fish and Wildlife. And we have a new captain, Robbie Creech. So you will get, he was the, uh, he was the Lieutenant Patrol Supervisor over in Marion County there. And he's, he's going to be a great, um, great guy. He's a great guy. He's well deserved. He's going to be a very good captain. So he should be here next month at next month's meeting. And I'll introduce um, him to everybody and you can ask him some questions. He is, primarily has inland knowledge, hunting, doesn't have a whole lot of boating safety or fisheries knowledge, but um, he's, he's uh, also a member of the National Guard, and he's, he's very quick on the uptake, so he'll get everything. And we're looking forward to him coming out here for Memorial Day weekend and hopping on the boat, and maybe we'll take him off shore and see if he's got any sea legs or if he just gets nauseous looking at the rough inlet <laughs> on the way out maybe sometimes. But that's okay. That's part of his inauguration, I suppose. Uh, Megan, officer specialist Megan Thomas, who is probably the shy, I'm, you know, I'm afraid to say it, the shining star officer in the squad. She last week promoted or advanced to investigator one. So it's, it's bittersweet that the squad's losing her. Again, another well-deserved advancement or promotion. The good thing is, though, she is filling the vacancy by investigator John Breckler who retired back in February, so she is staying put, and she will be here in this area. So she'll just work, be working for another supervisor and under the investigations captain. So she will still be assisting us as best she can, but our investigators handle a, a, a several uh, duties that we don't. For example, they'll handle the serious boating accidents and the boating fatalities, background investigations, other things, more long-term investigations, similar to how a detective works in the in the um, uh, in, a, in a standard police department. So well deserved for her, and, and she's moving on. The um, <clears throat> the good thing is there already is a request to fill her vacancy. Uh, Officer Steve Chamberlain, who works for, uh, who right now is under the supervision of Lieutenant Scott Dack, 
down in Flagler. He's primarily an inland position officer. Uh, he must have hit his head because he wants to come work on the coast and go offshore and get wet and seasick. So he's got a, his uh, transfer request in and hopefully, hopefully it will be filled quickly because we're coming up on, us, on the boating season and I've already spoken to my new supervisor about that and we're going to push to get him on the crew as soon as possible. Uh, so that vacancy is filled and we don't have to, uh, we're not going to be a, 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 an officer short for the summer boating season. Uh, and last thing is, I went and saw the orthopedic doc last week, so I'm, I'm cleared to come as of now. I have to go see him one more time, first couple days of June. I'm cleared to come back early June. So I'll be back in the saddle, and you'll get to see me here with my cranky Yankee accent probably more on a regular basis at that point in time. So are there any questions, comments, concerns? I have a question. Yes. Um, as of last week, I think there were 720 manatee deaths statewide, which is surpassing several decades <laughs> in terms of numbers. And I understand it's attributable to starvation due to lack of seagrass beds. Have we experienced any manatee deaths here? And if so, is, is there anything that we can be doing in terms of boater education? Um, any suggestions? We... I don't have any numbers for Flagler, or I don't, I'm not aware of any fatal mortalities or f mortalities down in Flagler, and I'm not aware of any here okay. right now in St. John's County. Uh, as someone who's worked all over the state and worked in, in Lee County, Fort Myers, Naples, Collier County, where you truly have real seagrass beds, we don't have too many of them here. Uh, our, our bottom is mostly mud and sand, and down there it's it's mostly sand, so it's a little bit different. Um, that, that doesn't mean that we don't have manatees, because we do. The diet's a little bit different. If, if what you, and I'm, I'm not aware, uh, Commissioner, what you, um, your source of information is, I'm just not aware of it, so I can't speak to that. But if it is, as you've um, read, seagrass, a shortage of seagrass, that's pr those deaths are probably, those mortalities are probably from other parts of the state and not up here, not up here in the northeast section of the state. We just don't have um, the seagrasses, primarily because if you look at a couple of factors. One, the tidal difference here in this part of the state is between six and eight feet, low tide, high tide. So when, and you've seen the tides underneath the bridges, going out the inlet, anywhere like that, they rip at many knots, whereas in South Florida, it's maybe two or three feet on a good day. So when you have that great of a tide, you get more sediment, more turbidity in the water. There's more sediment stirred up. That's why people say we have dirty water up here compared to South Florida. It's not dirty water. It's just more turbid because of the greatness in tides. And also the, the bottom is a little bit different because we have mud. If you go down to Matanzas Inlet, where it's almost all coquina down there, you'll see the water for almost all year round, particularly in summer. It's clearer because of the shell. So to answer your question, I'm not aware of anything going on around here. Okay. Uh, around here about that, unless someone else has some information. You, Josh, okay. But it could, it could be accurate. I, I just don't think <coughs> that is um, something that's um, specific to this area. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other government representatives? Neither of you two? All right. Uh, Secretary Treasurer's report. Uh, the city police law enforcement overtime of the 8,000 committed, 150 was spent. The sheriff's department overtime of the 20, 25,000 committed, 7,400, 7,411 was spent. Um, let's see, navigational repairs, we took care of that. Um, That was pretty much it. We didn't really spend that much. Those other things were spent months before for the, for the nav equipment and the Diamondback boat. In the State Board of Administration Fund A, there's $23,155. In the operating account, there is $277,000. And in the money market account, there's $2,485,500 in the money market account. 
um, of the of the taxes budgeted of the 583,400 for our taxes, we're still expecting 20,006 to come in. And it might come in in bits and pieces. It might not even come in depending if people are paying their taxes. So that's it. There's really not much change. Any questions on that from anyone? Would it be possible going forward at least to have the breakdown of the money we um, set aside through that resolution, the excess funds for boat access projects, so we have an idea of... Are you talking about the unspecified marine is, projects? Is that what it is? It's, it's unspecified marines. We oh, no, no, no. We're talking about the resolution we adopted to put to put aside, what, one and a half million, I believe, oh, for oh, um, oh, okay. increased boat access. So. so you want a separate line item for for under the funds available. So the funds available in the money market are going to be less than 1.5. Correct. And put another line item calling uh, it. I uh, mean, yeah, I could do that math, but I think it will just be more transparent for the public yeah, if yeah, they yeah. understand. So I'm going to put it in as, as reserves. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. Great. Any, anything else? Hearing nothing. Uh, next up is approval of minutes. Uh, did anyone have any uh, modifications or problems with uh, the previous meeting's minutes? I move we approve the minutes. I'll second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, engineering report. We have no current work, but I do have that old kayak information on for your next uh, agenda item if you want it. Right. Thank you for sending that along. Um, speaking of uh, kayak, uh, that brings us to old business. Kayak launch list of concerns. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, we uh, were all tasked with coming up with a list of um, concerns or ideas that we might have uh, with respect to the May Street kayak launch. Um, we can discuss that now. Uh, I have a couple of items that I'd like to kind of talk through. Um, I don't know if anybody else does. Go for it. You know, I'll start. Uh, so and the material that Taylor forwarded along, uh, handicap access loomed large. Um, I, I, I have some concerns about what handicap access, you know, what the ADA is actually going to require. Uh, of us if we do end up putting a kayak launch in there, not only in terms of parking, but also any other uh, requirements. For instance, are we going to be required to put a, uh, a handicap accessible sidewalk into a ramp down to the actual launch point? Um, uh, I'm also concerned, I mean, we've all talked about insurance as being a potential issue. What is this going to do to our insurance exposure as a port? We talked about possibly handing this, you know, once it's built, handing it off to the city. So maybe that point is moot, but it's definitely something that we need to consider. Um, something that I'm also concerned with, you know, when we had the public come and talk to us about using this ramp, most of the people who talked to us were commercial kayak. Uh, company operators. It was not just members of the public. I'm not even sure if any of them were members of our district. Uh, and I am a little concerned that once this thing is built, it's just going to be jammed up with commercial kayak uh, companies all day. And actual individual members of the public are going to have a hard time putting in because there's just a bunch of 16-foot kayak trailers jamming the, the entire um, the entire parking lot up. I also, uh, lastly, another thing that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing about, you know, <laughs> we've certainly heard that there is no, uh, you know, from certain members of this commission that there's no actual environmental concerns that we just need to put fill in and we can, we can go, but obviously that's not true. Um, and I would really like to hear what specifically is going to be required there. I mean, that is a, you know, as Tom has pointed out many times, that's a that's a pretty rough patch of land that is underwater a lot of the time. I mean, it is indistinguishable from the marsh around it during high tide. And I cannot imagine we can just sort of drop asphalt out there and then call it a day. There's going to be, you know, the, the amount of, uh, you know, runoff from that parking lot out into the water is alone, I think, is probably going to be something that we need to, we need to address. So those are, uh, I think, the, the kind of major things that, that I'd like to see uh, discussed or answered, uh, but I'm sure. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> to me, this whole thing is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already a kayak launch. And within walking distance, you have the v Volano landing. I just can't, for the life of me, understand how we even talk about putting tens of thousands of dollars into that area, which, as you, you pointed out, that I've said before floods almost at every high tide. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> so I think it's a waste of time to talk about it. I think it's a waste of time to ask Taylor Engineering any, or anybody else to figure out what the costs are because it's just a waste of time. I understand. It's already used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and it can't be used. If we do the things you said, then yes, the commercial can then take it over. Mm -hmm. But now they can't. Right. We, we did vote to move forward conceptually. I voted so against it. I know you did, but mm -hmm. that was in the minority. But I would like it's to add... So it's a waste of time, total the, waste of time. The list of concerns mm -hmm. is uh, bathroom access. Some of the public speakers that day mentioned having a bathroom. Right. I just don't know where there would be the space for it. I did receive... Um, a call from Commissioner Barbara Blonder over at the city. Apparently the same group of people that came and spoke to us also have been inundating the city with emails. I don't know, Jim, if you have any familiarity with this, but apparently there's um, been a lot of pressure on the city to move forward with this as well. And she wanted to, uh, you know, at least coordinate some kind of effort uh, because they were going to explore it as well. So. In the interest of having multiple government agencies move forward along the same lines, I think we should probably reach out to the city and find out what their plans are um, so we're not spinning our wheels month after month talking about this thing. Yep, that's a great well, point. I uh, had some concerns as well, and, and the biggest one for me is whose kayak facility is it when it's all done? Is the city going to take it over? And if it's, is the county? <laughs> <laughs> is the county going to take it over? Well, it's in, within the city's jurisdiction. Yeah, because, I, you know, with liability and who's going to empty the trash and clean the bathrooms and I don't know. I don't want to speak for the city commission, but for the city manager down lo lower. Um, first of all, uh, Commissioner West, you weren't here when David Bertram came in from the planning and building department. He's our director. Um, telling me everything that would need to happen. This would need to go to planning and zoning board. If it's paved, there would be, need to be a retention pond. There would need to be engineer plans for that. If there's parking on that on the road, what's the road going over that bridge? Do you see a bridge? Um, they, they, they would need to get a, a license agreement with DOT so cars can park there. I remember uh, Josh Underwood uh, mentioning one time, I don't know, about six, seven months ago that there was a car parked there and somebody from DOT was already there, was going to write him a ticket, and luckily the person left. So I'm not too sure that they would do that. We need insurance. Um, and the city doesn't have the personnel to run the kayak launch. Um, I mean, all the points that you brought up was, was great points. Uh, you mentioned garbage pickup. If businesses go down here, we run into the same issue over at the lighthouse boat ramp when these businesses go there. You know, there's not supposed to be any business transactions there because uh, they have no business license. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a business license and someone gets hurt, it's the property owner, which in the case would be the port, that would be the one liable for, the, for any damage for what happened here because, one, you know about it, um, so you're going to be liable for any of the damage, mm -hmm. which is one reason why the city doesn't want anything to do it. We don't want someone to stand here all the time. We don't have the money mm -hmm. to do that. Um, so those are just some of the, the issues that we're going to be running into. And I, and I mentioned to uh, Commissioner Way on the way in, um, similar to what um, Commissioner River said, you know, right now it's going to be, it's being used as a kayak launch, but if this gets wheels and now you all know it's a kayak launch and something happens, it's your property, no insurance, so on and so forth. Now we're bringing this, we're in the head up. So, just want to point that out to y'all. All right, thank you. I mean, it looks like we would be in the business of running and maintaining that kayak launch. Well, it sounds like we need to talk with, I mean, we've, we've heard a city representative, but if the commission has other ideas, maybe we need to talk to them. I'm kind of I'm a little stuck on what our next steps here yeah, are. Me too. I had never envisioned us as being in the business of running a, a kayak launch. My thought um, was that the city, if they wanted to pursue it, if the commissioners wanted to pursue it, they could vote to pursue a grant from us. Um, but 
that's about the extent of it. Um, I do know that they're getting pressure, but if it's something that they don't consider feasible, so maybe we do a gentle punt back to the city for some guidance on what they want to do and make it known that, you know, it's... I, I think you're right, listen. Jane, in, in that if, yeah. if, if there's not somebody ready to, for us to hand this thing off to, right. I mean, what are we going to do, take turns going to dump the trash? Not it. <laughs> no. and, and none of this made it to the director level yet. Right. I'm saying that either my level or David Bertram are planning a uh, building director who would probably come to first because of all the zoning issues and everything else. The one thing I do want to mention brought up at the last meeting, um, we were going to have a kayak launch at the end of Riberia Street, right. um, which unfortunately we had to pull the plug because we got hit with Hurricane Matthew and Irma. Now that's being used as a laydown area. The city is interested when that laydown area is going to be done. And unfortunately, it's going to be a year or two um, to put in a kayak launch down there. But uh, it's probably going to be three times as much as a $180,000 grant that we had originally approved um, for that. Um, you know, with the price of lumber and, and gas and everything else going up nowadays, uh, two years from now, who knows what it's going to be like um, for, the, for that grant process. And it would be, a, I think, 50-50 grant from the port and find mm -hmm. if we get that approval. So I just share that with you too. If you want to wait a couple of years, that may be an option. Well, I'm, I'm all for funding a kayak facility if it's in the right spot and then the county or the city takes it over after it's completed. Like, like Jane was mentioning, we'll help fund it, right. but we can't be in the business of running a boat ramp. Well, Commissioner West, maybe because you've already been in touch with Commissioner Blonder, you're the right person to continue that conversation and kind of feel out where they're, okay. where they're at in terms of, um, you know, potentially taking this on and us just writing them a check and, and yeah. disappearing into the night. I do know this is on John Regan's radar, okay. um, but I, I don't know the sentiment there. So, all right. And, and, and just, just one extra thought and point um, to follow up on what Mr. Piggott said. He and I spoke briefly after the last meeting also. And while the plans would need to be updated, obviously, you have the benefit of Iberia has already been planned. It's already been looked at. There's already a starting set of here's right. how we do this to work from. You right. would not have to reinvent that wheel completely. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, any other discussion of May Street Kayak Launch? I think he wants to talk about it. Imagine that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife. Just, um, my notice is unsolicited. I just want to let you know, was it a couple months back? We had all the kayak groups here. Mm -hmm. I spoke to them for quite a while outside. I gave them my two cents about where a good kayak launch would be and where it wouldn't. And the, the drawbacks that you'll, you've mentioned about um, over there at May Street. And, and yes, that's wetlands. And you, I, I don't remember, I think Commissioner Flowers said she had looked into it and there would be no issue with DEP permits and things like that. But someone who's been with DEP before, you know, when I was in other agency, uh, I, I just find that a little dubious, that's all. The, the kayakers want a sheltered area, the, the Commissioner Rivers. The problem with Volano is they don't want to get in that basin and get caught in that slop with the personal watercraft and other boats launching and going in and out. They want their own place, and I think we can understand that. So unless there's, someone's going to dredge a canal all the way from Volano, the basin, into Hospital Creek, which is not really, well, you could do it, but it wouldn't be a good idea. Um, that's, I, that's why I think Volano is not going to work for the kayakers. They use it for kayaking. They can. Yeah, and I, yeah, the, they, the establishment that's right there rents kayaks. They, I, I know, but ba their concern was they don't want to get caught up on a busy weekend or something like that when when the boating activity I is, is, that. Is, is, is tough. So un unless there's a little carve out for them someplace else in the basin, that might be an idea. But I, I did mention to them Riberia Street was still on a burner at that point. And if it is, um, I think that's one of the, their other concern was they wanted close access to um, um, City of Marina downtown. That's another reason. And so uh, that's why some of the other areas on the north and south end of the counties that I mentioned to them, they, they weren't interested in. Right. So that's all. Thank you. Uh, I believe that concludes that agenda item. Uh, next up is digitizing records proposal. 
Um, we were going to hear, Sandy was uh, going to look into, I believe, contacting someone at the college about this and report back to us. So I have nothing else. Can we make a motion to table? Yeah, I, uh, I move that we table this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, no new business. That takes us back to public comment. No? Uh, comments by commissioners. Commissioner Rivers? Oh. Don't have any. Commissioner Way? Um, yeah, I, at the last meeting, um, I was kind of given approval to look into a sign mm -hmm. and had the ability to spend $500 or whatever it was. Right. And I had a quote for the sign that exceeded that, and so I, I couldn't do anything about it and, and have them make it, but it was going to be a four-by-four four sign with the reflectivity. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't have the quote in, with me. Do you have it, Elise? Might be on my email because you sent it to me. Yeah, Did it was like five, five forty, or I don't, I don't know. It was over the, the allotted. Yeah, I'll was, look at my email. It was a few hundred Give me a minute. over the allotment. I'm <clears throat> so I guess need some direction as to whether to tell them to build the sign or not. And then if so, then I'll try and get Herb to. Uh, he's still in Salt Run, mm -hmm. so I can It'll hopefully get him scheduled to go. Put the sign up and and the piling at the same oh, time. Oh, he hasn't put the piling in yet either. Okay, he's waiting on that sign. Um, yeah, I think I mean we voted on that on an emergency basis on the at the last meeting. Um, I don't see why we can't vote to increase that amount at this one, Clay. There's no problem with that. Given the dollar amounts being discussed. Yeah, it's it's pretty. All right. Well, then I'm going to have him go ahead and build a sign. Okay. And then do you want me to try and coordinate with um, Yelton Construction on getting it? When can he do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because that's all right. I'll Jane, this is about those submerged rocks out in Salt Run. Oh, here we go. Right. Um, you. Oh, here it is. Seven fifty. Yeah. Okay. So was, yeah, we we approved five hundred, but it turns out it's seven fifty. So I'll make a motion to approve. Let's say up to nine hundred dollars, just in case there's some unexpected cost there uh, for production of this sign to go on the. Uh, Chris, are you calling them? Calling who? Uh, signs now. Yeah, I'll call. Oh, okay. I'll call signs now and tell them. That we proceed. Okay. Yeah, I just couldn't because I exceeded what I was allowed to spend. Okay, I'll second the motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, no comment from me, Commissioner West. Yeah, a couple of comments. Um, sorry, I missed the last meeting, but. It was an awful legislative session. I'm glad to be back. And this is my first meeting without a mask, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Um, so I understand from the Matanzas Wood Riverkeeper that Carl Blow uh, indicated that they were pursuing a ramp near Antigua off of 312. Does anyone know anything about that? That's the development that they're putting up over there. That's a uh, housing development. Over there, I know, but I don't know why Carl would be involved. Okay, crickets on that. Um, I mean, he's mentioned in the past that that side of the 312 bridge w would be the perfect place to put a ramp. In fact, he told us at a meeting, I want to say a year and a half ago, that the city or the county missed an opportunity by not forcing them to put a public ramp there, that that should have been a condition of their um, getting... Uh, you know, approval to put that development in in the first place. Okay. So I don't know if they're now able to twist People their arms. People are asking somehow. me, and I don't have the answers, <laughs> so I thought I would ask everyone here. Um, and then the second thing, I think I forwarded all of the email exchanges, but um, I, I do need to kind of recap this for the record, in my opinion. Um, Commissioner Jeremiah Blocker wrote a letter to um, Representative John Rutherford indicating that the county had secured $500,000 of the LAMP funds as well as 1.2 from the Port Authority and used the word secured um, for uh, boat access. Um, and. I got a phone call. I, I basically emailed saying, oh, that's not exactly accurate. I got a phone call from uh, Joy Andrews, who's um, the assistant county administrator, and she apologized for the misunderstanding. Apparently, there had been some sort of communication that those funds were dedicated to the county, and I explained that the county needed to apply for the grant, um, and that there might, there might be other agencies like the city um, of St. Augustine or even the city of St. Augustine Beach, which I don't think is doable, but um, 
at any rate, she apologized for whatever miscommunication transpired, and that got sorted out. But I think we need to make it clear to the agencies out there, and it hasn't been a problem to date, but you do need to like apply for right. the funds. <laughs> um, at some point, we may want to have some criteria along the lines of um, what we have here for the city in terms of evaluation criteria on how we should be spending our funds just in the you know very uh, extreme chance that we don't all agree <laughs> so yeah. that, those are my comments right oh you know actually I do have a comment just uh, also to make sure that um, the public record remains accurate I just wanted to um, uh, note that last Thursday I got a call completely unsolicited from John Wallace, the attorney who came to speak to us about possibly being our attorney and the one who's been in contact with Commissioner Flowers apparently um, about Summerhaven. He called me out of the blue because he said he wanted to quote set the record straight. Um, he had listened to previous uh, uh, recordings of our meetings and wanted to let me know that he thought uh, Commissioner Flowers had wildly misrepresented what he had said to her. He had never said that he was ready to go on any lawsuit related to Summerhaven. The most he had ever told her was that he would be willing to look over materials that she provided him. Um, she did provide him materials, and he also uh, volunteered to me that having looked at those materials and having uh, done some independent research of his own by speaking with several Summerhaven residents, uh, he sees no viable claim uh, on the Summerhaven. Uh, insurance issue. Uh, the exact same thing that was explained to us by our former attorney, Mr. Bedsall, in the February 2020 meeting uh, almost a year and a half ago. So uh, we've come full circle. And if I could just briefly, um, it, not a commissioner comment, obviously, but just so it is clear, I also received a contact from Mr. Wallace, and I will simply say it's consistent with what Chairman Brown has relayed as far as what Mr. Wallace relayed to me. Any other comments from commissioners? Uh, so now we schedule our next meeting, which I believe is going to be June the 15th. Is that right? Great. Well, this meeting is adjourned. I will not be here for the month of July, just so you Ooh, know. Where are you going? I go to Maine. Cool. Where in Maine? Um, up north of uh, Acadia.